Good morning, all. My name is Haley Comet, and welcome to Just Another Magic Monday. Your cosmic insights for the week of March 28th to April 3rd. What is happening cosmically? And furthermore, what I'm more interested in is supporting you with the tools and techniques to synchronize with the cosmos to live your most magical aligned life. I feel so grateful that I am part of some people's morning, Monday morning routine, and just know those comments make me smile every single time I read them. Thank you so much. And if this is your first time, hello, welcome to Magic Monday. Let's get excited about this week. Okay, so we've got this Aries new moon. Why is this significant? This is the first new moon of the year, okay? And you might be like, girl, it is March. We've had a couple of new moons. But in zodiacal years, Aries season kicks off the new year. So we have all of this forward momentum, courageous energy. But then there's also this Chiron Kazemi and Chiron's involved in this new moon. So yes, it's fearlessness, but it's not the fearlessness that you typically think of. Like when we think of being bold and we think of being fearless, we think of this warrior. But since Chiron is also involved, it's about finding that boldness within our our softness and I'll be speaking more about this flavoring the week as we move through it but before we dive in let's just start with our vibe check of the week so this is my thematic take on the week ahead so here's like a situation you can liken it to and this week what I thought of was a talent show and furthermore a talent show where you are debuting a poem that was inspired from a really hard time of your life, maybe something you're still sensitive about, and there you are going on stage regardless. You're feeling that fear, you're feeling that nervousness, you're like, what if people judge me? This is so personal to me, should I even be sharing this? But there really is this fearlessness in being able to acknowledge our wounds or acknowledge what has been painful or what has been hard for us to move through, but still getting up on stage. And maybe this week you're not getting up on a stage. Maybe you're feeling this fearlessness around asserting a boundary, feeling that fear and doing it anyway. Starting a business, feeling that fear, doing it anyway. Embarking on a new course, feeling that fear and doing it anyway. And when we think of fearlessness, we typically think of, you know, this, this like maybe like a burly warrior man, but it's like with this new moon in Chiron, it's about being fearless because we've been hurt. Being fearless because we dare to be soft in a world that wants to harden us up. So I'll be giving more texture to this vibe check, really bringing this Aries new moon to life as we move through. I just wanna make a quick note that I did start a new channel. It's called Self Care Astrology, and it will house all of my astrology anchored yoga and meditations. So what I'll be doing on that channel is I'm creating yoga flows and meditations that honor the energy of each new moon and full moon each week so we can do yoga get together, ground down in the energy. I'll be threading in the significance of the moons. I'm also hoping to do meditations for when you're experiencing certain transits in your life, Saturn return meditation, so on and so forth. So make sure to subscribe if you're interested in that. The Aries new moon yoga flow will be available this week during the Aries new moon. So if you're interested at all, I highly recommend going to check that out. And without further ado, let's take it into day by day, March 28th to April 3rd. So starting with Monday, March 28th, we do have a void moon Monday. And the closing aspect is the moon conjoining Saturn, which is sort of a blah energy, but I want you to feel the blah and do it anyway, okay? Sometimes we're blob, but the gift of it is that with the moon meeting up with Saturn, we can notice we're more attuned to our responsibilities. Again, our responsibilities can feel more crushing. It can feel more annoying. The moon does lightly dance with Venus before it meets up with Saturn. So you might be in the mood to maybe make a delicious breakfast or do something to infuse your day with a little less blah. And I'm not saying that Aquarius is a blah energy at all. That's not it. You could just find when it comes to tasks, you're not inspired, but with moon, joining Saturn are like, okay, fine, I'll just muscle through it. When the moon's void, important tasks you must avoid. So please on Monday, try to just stick to the typical and just give yourself grace because with this week, the 
New moon is this Friday, Thursday, if you're PST like me. We're in the waning moon week. And with waning moon, it's mostly about tying up loose ends. It's about coming inward. So being gentle with yourself, if you're feeling a little bit more introspective and really just allowing yourself the space and the grace this week to come inward, to rest. I mean, I've been hearing this all across the board with all of the planets direct right now. Does anyone else feel run ragged? Like I feel like there's so much forward momentum that I'm almost wishing for a retrograde just so I can catch my breath. And that's really how the cosmos are designed. It's like there's times of forward momentum, of initiation, of starting new things, which is the season we're in right now. And then there's times of contraction where we're fine, where we dial in. Retrogrades aren't meant to ruin our life. It's just meant to attune our focus to what needs to be worked on. Right now though, all planets are direct. So if you're feeling exhausted, if you're feeling a little burnt out, I've been hearing that pretty consistently in one-on-ones across the board. And I just want to A, give you permission this week if you need to take a beat, if you need to take a breath, if you just need to come inward. That's what balsamic moons are for, is to really be able to clear the space in our lives so we can call in this fresh new start, this bold new start that the Aries new moon brings in. Now on Monday, we also have Venus conjoining Saturn, okay? And Venus is pleasure, it's play, and with meeting up with Saturn, there's a feeling that we don't have enough. And some people could be feeling this coldness when it comes to their interpersonal relationships. They might not feel like they have enough love. Some people can be feeling extra harsh on themselves, particularly when it comes to their beauty, their appearance. Some people can be feeling a lack when it comes to their finances, to their money, to their material reality. Regardless, across the board, there is this feeling that there's not enough time for play or there's not enough time for pleasure. And maybe our responsibilities and our obligations are getting in the way and it just feels sort of blah. It permeates Monday, but I just want to let you know it's a bad day. It's not a bad life. And again, just Note it as data with what comes to the surface. Keep in mind, we have this fresh new start on Friday to really dial in with what we're calling in. So if you notice that you don't feel very loved, you don't feel very supported, that's where you're experiencing this lack or the scarcity sensation with Venus dialing with Saturn. Maybe your bold new start is having a really heartfelt conversation describing what it is that you need from your partners, or maybe your bold new start is getting back into the dating world. For some, let's say if you're experiencing scarcity around finances, maybe this bold new start is around raising your prices. Maybe it's about dialing in this new stream of income. Like rather than getting yourself too emotionally anchored to where you're experiencing scarcity, just realize every single day is a new opportunity and new opportunities can come into your life at any moment that can change your life. So it's a bad day, it's not a bad life, for some individuals, you can feel this desire to really dial in the foundations of your love life. Some can feel it that they are being more critical on their art or their creativity or they're taking it more seriously. Note what comes up and just keep working through it. And the moon enters Pisces that evening around 9 p.m. PST. On Tuesday, we've got that Pisces moon, which is spiritual, it is compassionate, it is emotional, and it's sextiling Uranus and Taurus, which is a call to invite in new. But since we're in the balsamic moon phase, it's called to invite in the new by releasing and clearing out the old. So follow your energy on Tuesday. Like you could find after work, suddenly you're feeling inspired to want to go through old photographs and to get rid of keepsakes that aren't serving you. There is an energetic component to everything that we do in this reality. Like you might just think that you're, you know, deleting photos, you're getting rid of clothes, but there is a spiritual component to that. Like your spirit is subconsciously creating space for you to invite in something new. That's why whenever I feel like something's blocked or something stagnant within my world, I like switch the furniture or I get rid of some stuff because that's that really invites in the energy of new, organizing your desktop computer, whatever it is, follow your energy on Tuesday and just follow what you feel intuitively inspired to do. Like suddenly do you feel called to organize your phone get rid of files. There's a deeper dimension to that, which the Pisces moon is trying to illustrate, and you're really creating space. This is very much spring cleaning energy. If you haven't taken that deep dive, I recommend it. It's in the middle of the week, so it's a little challenging, but trust me when I say if you're all of a sudden just like, I need to get rid of some stuff, or maybe emotionally you're like, I need to heal from this heartbreak, 
you are preparing for this fresh new start, but it's up to you to answer the call, okay? So pay attention, stay present, and notice what you feel inspired to do on Tuesday. And don't mind me with my sparkling water. It's getting pretty warm here in San Diego. I hope it's getting warm wherever you are. And this one's not my favorite. It's blueberry pomegranate. What's your favorite sparkling water? My boyfriend and I are kind of connoisseurs if one could be a sparkling water connoisseur. And we've been trying all the different flavors. This one is not really doing it for me, but it'll work, it'll work. Wednesday the 30th is really beautiful. It, the moon meets up with Jupiter, it meets up with Neptune. So again, following our inspiration, noticing what we feel drawn to, it, beyond just even getting rid of stuff. If you notice after work, you're like, I'm suddenly, really craving a popsicle. Let me check out that new popsicle place or whatever else, like allowing yourself to find that openness and that fluidity within your existence and allowing yourself to find that deeper meaning out of life. Like with the Pisces moon, you know, nurture your woo woo, however it is, whether it's watching Magic Monday or something like a psychic game or something that I've been doing is when I'm on walks, I stop by little free libraries and I'll just like pick a book and just open a passage and read something out of it and like ponder, hmm, is there any spiritual significance to that passage that I picked? And you know, a lot of people will be like, well, is it true? You just picked a random book. It could be anything, but it's like, but out of all the pages, out of all the books, out of all the books that people could have put in a little free library, that happened to be the one that I picked. Maybe it's because I'm a Pisces, but I love finding those deeper meanings and just allowing it to illuminate maybe certain things within your subconscious that you hadn't thought of prior. Like finding those little moments to find a spiritual significance, I think allows us to find a deeper experience of life. So stay open on Wednesday. If you notice, you know, angel numbers, you keep looking at the clock at 222, noticing, okay, what was it that I was thinking of? If that was a sign, what would the sign be trying to tell me? And noticing the insights that come up from there. That's why I love kind of dabbling into that world because it can bring up so much to the surface that, you know, if you're not into that, you could just think from your subconscious. If you are into that, you could think of it as a sign from spirit, a nudge from spirit on Wednesday, be open. And if you're feeling blocked, if you're feeling stuck, allow yourself to pray, allow yourself to feel open to people supporting you, allow yourself to be open to miracles. And the moon is void at 1135. Closing aspect is a sextile to Pluto in Capricorn. On Thursday, the 31st, the moon enters Aries, which is the sign of the forthcoming new moon. So you might notice, you know, you're not feeling as emotionally, which is great. You could notice you have a lot more energy. You could feel a lot more restless. You can feel a little bit more confident. On Thursday, the moon also meets up with Mercury that afternoon. So if there is a conversation of some boundaries that you need to enact, you need to assert yourself, you need to advocate for yourself. That's what's great about Mercury and Aries is that it really is this energy where we can effectively communicate what it is that we need. And with the moon meeting up with it, it's involved in the new moon, which I'll talk about in the Friday portion, even though for West Coast it happens Thursday night, there is this energy around communicating what it is that we need and like speaking it into existence. So on Thursday, if you need to communicate to your boss, hey, there is physically too much on my plate for me to be able to handle all of this, plus this project that actually interests me at my job. How can we shift things around? Or to a loved one, hey, I cannot deal with you saying that. Again, feeling that fear, it's scary to go up and tell someone what you need and tell someone what you're worth and tell, tell someone what it is that you will stand for and what it is that you don't. It will bring up every single insecurity. It will bring up every single wound, which is part of this new moon. But I want you to feel that fear and do it anyway, because with Aries, we're being encouraged right now to initiate, to advocate for ourselves, because truly no one's gonna do it for us as as unfortunate as that can be. So on Friday is when the Aries new moon exacts. Now for my West Coast individuals, it happens very late at night, but technically Thursday, but I'm gonna buck it into Friday because a majority of my viewers will be, it will happen on the first. And speaking of angel numbers, I was just talking about this on Wednesday, that this new moon even has an angel number, which sort of like supports its astrological meaning. It happens on the first, and it happens at 11 degrees Aries, so one, one, one. And one in numerology is all about 
initiation, fresh starts. And with this new moon, it happens on the same day as the Chiron Kazemi and the and Chiron, the wounded healer, is involved in this new moon. Now, let's bring it back to that talent show, that moment when you are about to go on stage and and say this poem and you check your phone and it's 222 and yes, maybe it's a coincidence, maybe it just happened to be that time, but isn't it supportive? But isn't it helpful if you just feel like that little nudge from spirit, like that little nudge from the universe saying like, you've got this. And in that moment of feeling that fear and stepping out there because it's not boldness that comes from a place of like, you can't mess with me. It's boldness that comes from a place of softness. I think when we think of boldness and when we think of courage, we think of like this warrior going to fight, but there's, there's this different sort of courage that shows up in softness. I'm sure many of us have been hurt, right? And Chiron sort of speaks to that, that wound, that ouch. And sometimes after you've been hurt, you really do need to close your heart. You can't be open to new people. You really need to protect your energy in order to heal. And if you're in that season of life, I applaud you. That's such an important time to really reclaim your power and reclaim that boundary. But there is such a magic that occurs when you're able to sort of move forward and still be open and still be gentle and soft and giving rather than letting that heartbreak or that wound harden you. I would say that's one of the things I'm mostly proud of in my life is my ability to still be soft and open and to see the good in people. And it has gotten me so hurt. I've had to learn lessons and I did have to go through that season where I had to sort of be that tough girl, I don't feel anything. And that wound, while it still hurts, I'm still open. I haven't let that wound harden me. In fact, I've made it, I've made myself more soft and compassionate and receptive, but to the right people. It, they do exist. And all of that to say, with this new moon, it's really asking you to be courageous, to be bold, to feel that fear, to feel that pain of what could have happened in the past, but not let it infect your future. To know that every single day is an opportunity to change your life or to create something new. Truly, with Aries season, it's all about forward momentum. And you know, when you go on that stage, a lot of people might not like your poem. And that hurts because it comes from a place of such genuine, heartfelt emotion. That's okay it's okay that they don't like your poem. Maybe they you know, wish they were fearless enough to go out and say their poem. If you start that business, not every single person in the universe is gonna buy from that business, but you can impact a lot of people's lives. If you go out and date, you might go on some bad dates, but you might find someone who's really lovely and makes it all worth it. Like with the sun illuminating Chiron on Friday, there really is this, maybe this, this, illumination of this pain point or this trigger or like, ooh, that hurts. Ooh, when I wrote that poem, I was in the depths of heartbreak and now I'm just taking my broken heart and showing it at this talent show to all of these people. Ooh, this hurts, but it doesn't hurt enough to keep myself from living my most embodied, authentic life. And that is the fearlessness I'm talking about. Fearlessness that comes from softness and you know on friday there can be an illumination that pain point there can be a knee-jerk reaction i'm gonna hurt you before you hurt me you triggered this emotion in me so i'm gonna try to hurt you or i'm gonna lash out or something of the nature but it's such a beautiful thing where you could be like this hurts but i'm going to allow myself to move forward with it i'm not going to keep myself from getting out on that stage because i'm scared of what people are going to say about me or say about my journey that has nothing to do with me so be fearless get out on that stage whatever it looks like for you on friday and some ways to celebrate you can always do some yoga with me my love great energy for calling in the new allowing ourselves to make peace with that that chironian wound wherever it's illuminated within our life as well as just visualizing the fresh new start feel that fear do it anyway. Feel that fear, visualize it anyway. And allowing yourself on Friday to think about what scares you. Think about what scares you because there can be a deeper level to why it scares you. Like if there is a heartfelt desire that you have, I so want to move to this new city and you feel it and you're like your heartbeat quickens and you're like, but could I? Do I make enough money to survive in that city? 
Am I friendly enough to be able to make new friends? Better not risk it. Like this is the new moon to be able to just feel into it and be like, I deserve to live a life that is influenced by my desires and not my fears. Like if you were to weigh out all of your desires and all of your fears and look at your life, would you say your life has been created out of your desires or have you been protected because of your fears? That's what this new moon's asking. So devoting some time on Friday to feeling into that for yourself. On Saturday the 2nd, Mercury also joins the Chironian party. So pay attention to any you know, sensitivity when it comes to your communication. There can be you know, your thought processing sort of going into the ways that you are not enough. Again, it's feeling that dialogue and doing it anyway. And with Mercury Chiron, like how hard are you being on yourself? So on Mercury Chiron, just being mindful of the way that you talk to yourself. And if it's sort of this loop around, you can't move, you don't make enough money, you're not friendly enough, how will you ever find someone to date? That city's so hard in. Like that particular loop. Are you gonna listen to that loop? Or are you gonna listen to that, that voice that's bubbling up from spirit? Like, like, Anything could happen there. Your life could change. You could find more of yourself. You could finally do those things that you've been barring yourself from experiencing. You could be closer to this person. You can finally do this or finally explore this career. Which voice you're gonna to listen to? On Saturday, it's really an illumination of that. You can also have healing, clarifying conversations. The moon is void at 6.51 a.m. and it enters Taurus at 9.50 a.m. And I'll just say for that little bubble, like 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. PST, the closing aspect is the Aries moon square Pluto. So with that and with Mercury conjoining Chiron, you know, there might be a lot that's coming to the surface. There's a lot that comes to the surface before you step out on that stage, before you step out and share that poem, right? There's a lot. You're feeling not enough. What if they hate it? What if they judge me for my heartbreak? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm admitting that I went through this experience. Oh my goodness. All of this coming to the surface and the almost gymnastics that you have to do with yourself to get yourself out on that stage. But isn't it worth it if after that talent show, one person comes up to you and is like, oh my gosh, I felt seen, I felt heard, thank you. Like that feeling makes all of that fear worth it. I just remember when I was starting my YouTube channel, I was so scared, but I really sunk in. I was like, if one person can listen to a video and connect to their chart a little bit more, isn't that worth it? Isn't that why we're literally here? <laughs> and the first time I got a comment like that, it made all of it worth it sitting here trying to figure out my camera, trying to figure out my light, editing to get like two views. It made all of that worth it when like the first person commented like, wow, thank you. I never thought about it that way. Or I never knew that about my chart. I was just like, oh, it made it so worth it. So who knows what lives you could be impacting? Who knows what potential you could be unearthing if you dare to take that step forward. If you dare to hear those voice, hear that chatter that has kept yourself safe, that has kept your life influenced by fear, allow yourself to hear that noise, hear that negative self-talk, and do it anyway. Step out on that stage. And then with the moon entering Taurus on Saturday the 2nd, there really is this even keel approach within our emotional landscape. So dialing into our physical reality, maybe going hiking, eating something delicious, taking a bath, grounding down. It does feel like there could have been a lot that came to the surface or kind of emotional or sort of intense. So allowing yourself that space to just nurture yourself with this exalted moon. And on Sunday the 3rd, the only aspect is that the moon, the Taurus moon meets up with Uranus. So a great time to try a new food, try that new restaurant, try that new hike, invite in some newness. So much in the cosmos are asking for fresh new beginnings, fresh new starts, fresh new poems for you to go out on that stage and deliver. You never know whose life you will impact when you are brave enough to be vulnerable and you never know the version of yourself that you will meet on the other side of that leap of faith. So feel the fear, feel the insecurities, feel what comes up, but do it anyway. Loves, the Magic Monday mantra of the week is I am courageous enough to be vulnerable. And we think of those as opposites. We think courage is when you act like nothing hurts you and when you keep everyone at bay. But I believe that courage is allowing ourselves to soften, allowing ourselves to be seen within our authenticity, in our trueness. It's like when you go out at that talent show and you read that poem, you feel naked, you feel so exposed because it's coming from such a deep sort of like personal place, right? But 
that can also be a power source because Chiron in astrology, it's the wounded healer because it's where we have personally suffered, but it's where we can alchemize that pain into healing for other people. That wound brings knowledge. It brings wisdom. It brings empathy. That heartbreak allows you to write a poem that other people who have been heartbroken in a similar way can connect to. And it takes bravery to be vulnerable with your insecurities, with what has hurt you, with the ways that you do not feel enough. However, it can also be a source of power. Your purpose can be embedded within that particular wound. It takes that courage to be open to a fresh start, open to a new person after you've been heartbroken, open to a new job after your past job mistreated you. It takes courage to continue to be open even when you've been hurt. So I am sending you that courageous, bold, empowered energy this week. I would love to do some yoga with you. If you want to check out my new channel, I would really appreciate if you could throw me a subscription. I think, I think I'm at like 50, so we're getting there. Love, so my Instagram handle is at Haley Comet Astrology. My TikTok is the same. I would love to connect with you over there. And until we meet again, drink lots of water and stay magic.